Now that we've learned how to do the basic create, read, update, and delete functions in Laravel, I'm going to take a step away from database interaction, and I'm going to show you how to incorporate your own CSS and JavaScript in your Laravel project. If you go back into your project, and on the left-hand side here, you should see webpack.mix.js. Now what this is, is it's called Laravel Mix, and it's an API for Webpack. Now, if you don't know what Webpack is, it's something that allows you to compile your JavaScript and your CSS into files that are production ready. So when you're working on a development server, you don't need to minify your CSS and JavaScript because you need to allow uh, it to be readable so that you can, you can see what's happening. If there are any problems, you can fix those files. So how Laravel works is you work on the source files, which would be the source CSS and source JavaScript, which are located in your resources. And then you have, uh, let me just close this up and make it easier to understand, your JS folder. In your JS folder, you have app.js. That is where your main JavaScript file, uh, source file is. And then you have your SAS folder here where your app.scss file is. So if you edit these, Laravel Mix will start watching and once it sees a change it's automatically going to compile the changes and for css sorry scss it's going to automatically compile it into a css file the css file and the javascript files that get compiled from your source files will be located in the public folder in the public css folder you'll see app.css and that is the compiled version of your source scss file in the JavaScript folder, that is the compiled version of your app.js file in your resources folder as well. So the first thing you need to do in order for Laravel Mix to start running is go into terminal within your project and then do npm uh, install. And what we want to do is we want to install all of the node packages that we require for Webpack and Laravel Mix to work. Now, once it starts working, we can then run. So we've done the install. Now we'll do npm run watch. What this is going to do is it's automatically going to run in the background. And whenever we do a change to our JavaScript or our SCSS, it's automatically going to compile it into the respective files, the CSS and the JavaScript files. So now that it's running, we can just minimize that and make sure you leave it running. Otherwise, it's not going to compile. Let's just do some CSS within our, if we go to resources and we go to our SAS folder and we go to app.scss, let's just do body background black. I'll hit save and you should see at the bottom right hand corner here, Laravel mix build was successful. So what we can do now is if we go to our public folder and we go to our app.css, you'll see all of this stuff, which is being brought in by the SAS. So you've got the uh, fonts from Google, you've got a variable SAS file, and then you've got Bootstrap. And that's why Bootstrap is there. If we go all the way to the bottom, we should see body background equals black, okay? So now that we know that when we wanna work on CSS and JavaScript, we have to do it within our source files, and then this is the end result. So we want to attach our public CSS and public JS into our into our project so that they can actually work in our project. So let's go back into our resources folder and we will then go into our views and we'll go into our master template. If we go within our header or head uh, tags, we will do asset and then we'll do CSS app.css. Okay, and then we're gonna obviously have to put that within link href equals, and then rel equals style sheet. So this is going to be pointing to the style sheet within our public folder. As you can see, we're using the asset helper, and that automatically creates the URL to the public folder. So it's pointing to that public app.css. And then let's just copy that and go to the bottom, and we're gonna include our JavaScript, which will be script, source equals put it in there we'll just do js forward app.js and we'll then close it off
Cool. So let's now go into our project and refresh it. And as you can see, it's automatically black. And the styling has changed as well because of Bootstrap. So you'll notice here now we have app.css and app.js. So let's go back into our resources and we'll go into our SAS folder, into our app.scss, and we'll just do background equals red, hit save, wait for Laravel Mix to pick it up. And then if we refresh, it's automatically going to start working there as well. And it's exactly the same with our JavaScript. So if we go into our JavaScript folder or JS folder within our resources folder, go to app.js, and then we can do alert hi. Okay, as you can see, there was an error there because I did something wrong. So if that comes up, there's usually an error and you might need to save the, the file again and wait for Laravel Mix to actually uh, allow it to work. So there we go, it's worked. So we'll go and refresh and then JavaScript should automatically come up as well. Great. All right, so that works. You'll also notice that uh, Laravel comes automatically with Bootstrap. It also, uh, sorry, that's not Bootstrap. That is referring to Bootstrap.js, which has all of these things um, like it does require Bootstrap. It has jQuery, it has Axios automatically. If you don't know what Axios is, it's a great uh, extension for making HTTP requ requests with JavaScript, especially with Vue. So Laravel comes with Vue.js inbuilt. Um, and I will be showing you how to do that in the next few tutorials. But to keep it simple, now we have set up our app.js and our uh, app.css files. One thing you might want to do if you run a project and it's on a development server is you want to give your app.js and your app.css files versions so that if you do make a change to the JavaScript, you probably know that when even when you do a change, someone who's already been on the website, it will cache their JavaScript file. So it's probably best practice to use uh, Laravel Mix to give it versions. So to do that, if you go to webpack.mix.js and you just at, next to each one, you just do dot version and then dot version here as well which means that it's going to give the version to app.js and to app.css. And then if we go to our master.blade, instead of making it asset, just make it mix. It will, it will do exactly the same thing, but it's going to give it a version automatically, which is, which is really helpful instead of having to manually add versions on there. So we'll refresh the page now. If we go and look at the source, it still hasn't added the version. And the reason why is because we just need to run npm run watch again actually what you could do is you could do npm run prod and when you do npm run prod it's going to minify everything to production level so your css and your javascript will be fully minified and we'll just wait for that to run to see how it then comes up in our project now that it's run if we go you'll firstly notice that npm run watch is not working anymore so it's not actually watching anymore so unless you're going to be making it a production uh, project and uploading it, you might want to keep NPM Run Watch running until you do that. But just for the sake of showing you, if we refresh the project now and go to view page source, you'll notice now app.css has its own version and app.js has its own version. If we click into the CSS, you'll see it's fully minified and you'll also notice that app.js is fully minified as well. So that's definitely for production. The only thing that I would want to show you now is how to add another JS or another CSS file if you needed to. So to do that, what you need to do is go back into webpack.mix.js and all you'd have to do is say you want another CSS file. You could just do that and call it uh, test.scss. Then go into your resources and SAS folder and create it. Test.scss and we'll just do body background equals blue and we'll make that important so it overrides the other one. And then if we run, run npm run watch, what's going to happen is it's going to automatically check that file and it's going to create that file in our public.css, uh, our public CSS folder. So if we then go into our master.blade.php and add test 
dot CSS there. And then we go and, oops, go and refresh. You'll notice now that we have test.css and app.css. And if you go into there, you can see what we created earlier. Okay, so in this video, I've shown you how to create your own CSS and JavaScript files and make them have versions. In the next video, we are going to set up authentication for the users that we created earlier. Thanks.